heart is in my mouth my and beating like crazy because that was just the best display of dolphins we've ever had here on Salty Lass and I was just looking at them and I just hope to goodness I've got some good footage for you Pete guys because I was in the moment but I was also trying to film for you and it was like oh I want to be in the moment but we'll just see what I've got oh, My heart is just still racing from that incident. Right, celebratory crumpets are on the way and I have to get below decks. Oh yeah, sounds great idea. Ah. It's not particularly pleasant crossing though. No, I can understand why when we came across it was very bouncy because we've got very little wind components and um, the waves are just, basically we're being kicked about quite a lot and um, that's just from the sea state itself. There's just a lot of swell and uh, I'd love to report something really exciting but it's dull! But unfortunately what we're doing is we're getting out of Dodge uh, because um, I'd love to stay at the Outer Hebrides because I want to explore that more but there's going to be a big storm coming and the Outer Hebrides is not going to be a very good place to be so we've decided that we're just going to have to have some adventures somewhere else We came to uh, Canna after a motor, um, however we did see the dolphins and they were wonderful. I'm afraid to say my photography went so ridiculous, it's untrue, but there you go. Too much in the moment. Well, we just had a lovely display of dolphins. Um, bad weather is due in, so we're running into ports inland to keep out of the bad weather. Um, it's been a very dull motor sail. There's been very little wind. We've got the sails up to help us, but it's been gray, it's been dull, but I'm glad to report that as we go south, the sky is brightening, it's getting blue patches. It's looking a lot nicer as we go south. It's warmer, I might imagine that. The south's warmer than the north, but the highlight it's just a display of common dolphins that just came over to the boat and then cavorted around under the bow and Gaynor nearly fell off the boat because she was that busy reaching over to look at him and after yesterday's performance with Gaynor's camera uh, 
<laughs> oh dear, how not to film dolphins. It should be a, a master class on how not to film dolphins, I'm afraid. But she was just so excited. I <laughs> can't really blame her. I was excited too. Uh, but it's great seeing them. And they were just here for, what, five minutes? Something like that. And it makes the passage all worthwhile. And then to top it all off, after the dolphins have been, the sun came out. They brought the sunshine with them. Dolphins are wonderful. Sailing the boat, or rather letting the boat sail itself. Um, sorry I'm distracted, there's, just, there's a, a motor launch coming this way and he looks like he's doing his best to ram us, but I think he's just turned off to pass up our starboard side, so that's good. I'm, I'm sure his wake will kill us, but there you go. Um, no, the, uh, the wind came up and I've been able to sail the boat pretty much from the other side of the Isle of Muck to Arden American Point. And um, it's just been a slow downwind sail. Um, I used the autopilot to turn the boat while I jibed the sail and um, I'm afraid we were one crew member down because one of us wasn't feeling the best but in order to preserve people's feelings I will not name the crew member in question who took a rest while I sailed the boat. Right, I see you're getting yourself all kitted up. What's going on? Well, um, we're in uh, Tobermory and um, we decided to come on to a morning ball last night. Um, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I was just... I couldn't keep awake. Um, I had a bit of a sniffle, but it seems to have all gone, thank goodness. Um, so what we've decided to do is um, we've decided to go into a pontoon for tonight because we've got to do supplies, washing um, and also we're going to see if we can sort out the windlass. So that's quite a bit to do really uh, but because we're going to use the ramming of the pontoon technique Apparently Bev says it's not ramming, it's going in nicely, a gentle takeover. And we realised that I hadn't done it. So <laughs> Bev's going to be training me how to do it. And then we're going to video it so that you can use it yourself. If you don't know the technique, then um, Bev's going to teach me how to do it and hopefully <laughs> teach you a lot as well. It should be said that having a decent bow fender is an essential for this technique. Absolutely. It is an essential um, and we're not talking a wishbone fender here, we're talking a nice long fender because um, pontoons are at different heights and you really just do not know what height your pontoon uh, that you're going to be hitting is going to be. Well, what we've done for the um, ramming the, te uh, the um, pontoon technique is you must have a bow fender on. Uh, that is essential for this technique. Um, now, you can get away with one uh, fender and that needs to be uh, at the fattest part of your boot. Um, but if you have time, like we do today, uh, to put two on, then the second fender needs to be behind where the um, fattest part of your boat is. <laughs> the beamiest part of your boat. Um, so um, that's where we've got our fenders.
reality is I still can't see the other side of the ground. But you can see a lobster pot. I can see a lobster pot, but I can't really see anything else. The visibility is pretty rubbish, really. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at the visibility, which, to be honest, is pretty poor. I can't even see the other side of the um, sound of mole. Um, it's mizzling, which means that um, I'm just going to get wet. And I'm not that keen on getting wet. We've got no pressing need to move, have we? No, I, I, I've, I've got some plans as to what we fancy doing. Uh, because we like doing things which are a little bit different, but we've definitely exhausted Tobermory. Mori. <laughs> There's nothing much else to tell about here. <laughs> well, from a point of view from the blogs, that is, anyway. <laughs> What's that I spot next to your wine glass? It doesn't look like wine. It looks a bit stronger. It looks like a little uh, uh, whiskey from um, Tobermory. Mori. After all, we are in Tobermory, we thought we'd collect a couple of whiskies. Mm, and maybe we'll fetch a few more as we go south, because we haven't had any Scottish whiskies since we've been in our chill uh, hotel in yeah. Campbelltown. I've had a rum, though. <laughs> We've had a Scottish rum, yes. Yes, so, um, but after all, Scotland is more... It's well known for its whiskies. Mm. And this is Tobermory. not to um, sail yesterday because it was just so grey. Well I'm afraid to say today has been incredibly grey as well although I have to tell you I did see some blue skies. Not much but I did see some. Um, but um, we're going back to Oban um, because we just need to pick up some supplies but what Beverly and I have decided to do is because um, the trip from Gia to Oban basically had to be done in a day, more or less. We had two days to do it, and we did it. Uh, that we're going to toodle down and just pop into all the places that we wanted to go to, and we didn't because we had to do a passage. So that's our plan at the moment, isn't it, Bev? Yeah, it is. Uh, one advantage of today over yesterday was Yesterday was foggy, grey and horrible. Today was foggy, grey and horrible, but yesterday it was chucking down rain. That is true. We have had rain, but nowhere near as much. It was like a bit of rain and then it'll be off again and a bit of rain and off again. Um, and the uh, teak has actually dried out today, whereas yesterday it was wet all day. So um, from that point of view... Uh, I'll ha -ha have no rain over rain any day of the week. So the winds are light, we're doing three knots across the Firth of Lorne. Yeah, 2.6 at the moment, but <laughs> I'm just enjoying sailing because we motor sail down um, the mall. Um, purely because um, the course made good. Um, worked out that if we were sailing I'll set with your eyes open <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah main because the course made good if we were sailing we'd be increasing the distance whereas if we motor sailed we can go a little bit closer to the wind we'd still be in there if we were tacking if we were tacking oh yeah we'd still be there because um 
you know, to get to get the work, the wind, um, we'd be tacking again down. It's a narrow the channel and it was very much on the nose. Yeah. You'd just be tacking and the course made good. So we've did a lot of talking about course made good and we might do that. No, as we a didn't. Topic. We did a lot of talking about velocity made good. Sorry, that's it. Velocity made good. Velocity made good. So I'm going to have to learn a little bit more about that before I can start raffling and telling you about that one. Because I'll get my textbook on advanced vector theory out. <laughs> oh, you're going to be in for a nice winter talk on that one. Not. <laughs>